Not 31, welcome to example 9. We're going to take a look at a couple of infinite geometric sequences or geometric series and we're going to add or we're going to evaluate each sum. Now I say infinite because now these are written in summation notation which is fine. You can see I'm starting at 1 but I'm going to infinity. Take note that there's not a finite number up here. In both of these cases I'm going to infinity. So I have infinite series here but it might not be super obvious that these are geometric yet. So let's, let's talk about why these are geometric. So I'm going to do a little bit of work right here. All right, I want you to see that this is a geometric sequence, All right, or at least this part. This is the geometric sequence because I have this summation sign here. It turns into a series. All right, let's imagine i was equal to 1 and look at the first term. The first term would be 2 fifths. All right, if i was equal to 1, well, 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative one-third to the zero is just one, so a sub one is two-fifths. So let's keep that in mind. That'll wind up being important in general. Oops, let me scoot this down so you can see it. Excuse me. There we go. All right. That'll wind up being important once we go through the infinite sum formula. All right, I want you to see a sub two. All right, if i is two now, this will stay two-fifths, and this will become negative one-third to the two minus one, so this will be negative one-third raised to the first power. All right, if I did a sub three, this is going to be now two-fifths times negative one-third squared. So I want you to start to see, to go from a sub one to a sub two, I multiplied by negative one-third. To go from a sub two to a sub three, I multiplied by another negative one-third. And you can feel this out, right? a sub four would be two-fifths times negative one-third cubed. So to go from first term to second term, second term to third term, so on and so forth, you are multiplying by negative one-third. And when you multiply by a constant or a common ratio, you have a geometric sequence. All right, so things to take note of here is we know r is equal to negative one-third, and we know a sub one is two-fifths. Right? And I do have a geometric sequence. Let me just write that here. We have a geometric, well technically we have a geometric series because I'm being asked to add the terms of this sequence. All right. And more specifically, I have an infinite geometric sequence, excuse me, an infinite geometric series, and it's infinite because of this infinity up here. All right, so those are all great things to, to keep in mind. Now imagine you wanted to add these numbers up and we want to add all the way through the infinite number of terms that we could list. So we want s sub infinity. It's going to be the ratio of a sub 1 to 1 minus r. So in this case we know a sub 1 is 2 fifths and we know r is negative 1 third. Okay. Now before I finish out this formula, it's a real good thing to check that r is safe. All right, and the big thing about r is that its absolute value has to be less than 1. Okay? So in this case, the absolute value of r would be 1 third, and that is less than 1, which means I can keep going with this formula. If this r was greater than 1 or less than negative 1, I would, I would just stop the problem. Actually, I wouldn't even have started this fraction. I would have just stopped and said, hey, the sequence, or excuse me, the series diverges. All right, but it is less than one in absolute value, so I'm good to go here. Now, if we play this out on our calculator, we wanna be careful. So I'm gonna go, hey, this is gonna be 2 fifths divided by 1 plus 1 third down there on the denominator. All right, and you see that I'm putting my denominator in parentheses because it is a binomial. All right, so when I hit math frac, it looks like I'm getting 3 tenths. All right, so let me just write this out. This is 2 fifths divided by 4 thirds, which is going to be equal to 3 tenths. All right, so we're getting that our infinite sum is 3 tenths. Great. Now let me move this up just so we can see my, my work. All right, so s sub 10, excuse me, s sub infinity is equal to 3 tenths. There's my answer. All right, so again, it seems a little bit funky, but if I added these term, the terms of this sequence forever, right? I just kept listing them out, a sub 5, a sub 6, a sub 7, 
a sub a million, a sub two million, a sub a billion. If I added all of those terms, they get bounded by the number three tenths. It's kind of crazy. You could add an infinite number of numbers and it's capped, right? It doesn't blow up to infinity. That sum is an infinity, it's just three tenths. All right, so with that, let's look at part B. All right, and let's see if we can recognize this one as a geometric sequence as well. And I get that it's ultimately a geometric series because we're gonna add the terms of the sequence, but I want us to see it. So here, a sub one is 1.9, right? If j is one, we just get 1.9. a sub two, this would be 1.9 squared, right? a sub three would be 1.9 cubed. a sub four would be 1.9 to the fourth. And I could keep going, just like I could have kept going here, all right? But I think you can start to see that in order to go from one term to the next, to the next, to the next, I keep multiplying by 1.9. So to go from 1.9 to 1.9 squared, multiply by 1.9. To go from 1.9 squared to 1.9 cubed, multiply by 1.9. And then multiply by 1.9. So whenever you multiply by a constant, to get from one term to the next, you're looking at a geometric sequence. And really we have an infinite geometric series again because I'm being asked to add, right? I see the summation sign and I've got the infinity up here. All right, so with that, let's see what we know here. All right, I know that a sub one is 1.9 and here I know r is equal to 1.9. Now. If I was going to use the S of infinity formula, I would say it was A sub one over one minus R, but we have a problem. Take a look at your R, all right? I want us to take note that the absolute value of R is greater than one, all right? So ultimately, because the absolute value of R is greater than one, I cannot use this formula. It doesn't apply, it doesn't work. So then what we would say is this series diverges. Another way of saying that is that this sum is infinite. All right, and I'll just give you a, a little, a little hint as to like, or a little look into how this works. If I took 1.9 and I added 1.9 squared, you can see that I'm at 5.51, right? If I just did the second partial sum. Well, let's say I added to that 1.9 cubed. Do you see how it got a lot larger, right? It, it's not getting capped, right? Now let me add 1.9 to the fourth, right? It got even larger. Now I'll add to that 1.9 to the fifth. It's getting larger. So you see these sums getting larger and larger and larger. They're not capping off like they did in examples eight and nine. They just keep getting larger. If I add 1.9 to the sixth, it's getting larger. And so when these sums don't cap off, when they don't have a bound, we say that they're divergent because these sums are ultimately going to infinity. All right, so there's a look at, we've got two sums, all right, in summation notation, all right, they're both geometric and maybe you see the geometric in the fact that you had exponential growth here, right? Here's a power where the variable is up in the exponent. Here's a power where the variable is up in the exponent. And anytime you have exponential growth, you're looking at a geometric series, All right? But here, the absolute value of r was less than one, so we could apply that formula for the infinite sum. Here, the absolute value of r was greater than one, so that formula doesn't even apply. The series is divergent. All right, so with that, we're gonna try an annuity problem, and then that's gonna take us out of section 9.4. All right, I'll see you in a few. Thanks so much, bye.